Hi, bread bakers and challah bakers. Um, I'm making this video for those of you who have done the time honored tradition of making challah by hand, who now have maybe trouble with your hands or you're busy and you wanna make things easier for yourself. I'd like to show you how I make challah making the dough in the bread machine. So I have measured out all my ingredients. Actually, I've weighed out all my ingredients, but the recipe that I will give you, which is just strictly from Zojirushi, is um, it comes in cups if you need measuring cups, but it comes in grams, which I much prefer. So the recipe calls for 240 grams of water, which I'm going to put in the pan. Let's see, it just goes in there two eggs beaten, this is 54 grams of grapeseed oil, you can use any vegetable oil that you would normally use in your, your challah, I just use grapeseed oil, and I also put the honey in there because putting the honey in the oil means honey doesn't stick so much to the, to the vessel although it's been sitting in there for a while, so I'm wrong. <laughs> I usually pour it right in, but I measured ahead, so that's why I had the spatula handy just in case. Um, usually I put the oil and the honey and then pour it right in and the honey hasn't sunk to the bottom like that. That's okay though. Let me get it all out. All right, that should be good. So those are the liquids. In my bread machine, liquids go in first. Not all bread machines do it that way. So I have water, eggs, grapeseed oil, and honey. In goes the bread flour, 512 grams. I always use King Arthur bread flour because it has the highest protein content. Okay. And then when I'm putting my ingredients in the bread machine, I always, I have a routine so I don't get mixed up if I put an ingredient or not. So it also calls for sugar, 24 grams. I always put that on the right side. And six grams of salt, which I always put on the left side. And then if the phone rings or something happens, I can look and see, okay, that's my sugar, that's my salt, I put in both. Finally, we need yeast, seven grams. You make a little well in the middle. And I always use SAF instant yeast. And I pour it in there. That is literally the hardest part about making this bread. Now I'm gonna have my husband, the filmer, the filmmaker, <laughs> come over to the bread machine. And you just pop the pan in. Make sure it's down, close the lid. I have to plug it in. And on my Zo, Zo Shirushi, it's course number 11. So it's already set because that's all I ever use and I press start. Now, a lot of people who get a bread machine for the first time think they can walk away. Um, this bread machine has a 30 minute ish rest or preheat period. It's the best thing ever. You think, well, that's a waste of time. A lot of people want to turn that off. I would never do that. I put in tap water or re um, refrigerated, you know, my refrigerator purified water in cold, eggs in cold. If I'm making something with butter, goes in cold. I don't have to warm my water. I don't have to soften my butter if I'm making some, not for challah obviously, but for something else. My machine has this about 30 minute rest slash preheat cycle, which basically brings all of the ingredients to the optimal temperature. So in about 30 minutes, I'm gonna have my husband turn the camera back on and I'm gonna show you how the dough ball needs to look. And if you've been making challah for a long time, you're going to be a little bit more familiar with this, but in the case of this particular recipe, I almost always need to add a little more flour. Uh, sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. It depends on the humidity. Uh, I'm in Southern California where 
we don't get as much humidity as some of you who live in the eastern part of the country or other places. So you do have to watch your dough ball to make sure that you're getting a nice smooth dough ball, dough ball that isn't too wet or too dry. So I'll be back when this gets started. Well, I got lucky today. It must not be overly humid because I don't think I need to add any extra flour. It's a nice, becoming a nice smooth dough ball. If I put my finger, it's sticky. It's tacky rather, but it's not sticky. The dough isn't sticking to my finger. Um, if it was pooling around and not incorporating, I would know that I would need to add a little more flour and just add like a tablespoon at a time more. So everything's going great with the dough. I can now walk away, do whatever I want to do, and leave it until the dough cycle is finished. Every once in a while, it's okay to open the door and peek. Um, it has about you know, 25 minutes left, but you can see it's rising very nicely. So when it comes out of the bread maker, I will show you what happens next. So the bread dough from the bread machine is done. You can see it rose beautifully. So now I'm just going to dump it out. Make sure my paddle, see one, one paddle stuck in there. And by the way, a little tip, the second your dough is out of the bread pan, fill your pan with warm soapy water and get the paddles out. Okay, so that's over there. All right. So I now have a beautiful blob of challah dough. All that's left to do is braid it, let it rise the last time, and bake it. That's how easy it is to make challah or any other bread in the bread machine. So I tend to roll it around in the dough. And I'm going to admit right now that while I'm very good at baking bread, and I'm very good at baking challah and rolls and hamburger buns and all kinds of things. I'm not all that great at the cosmetic end of things. So I'll be the first to admit that I don't do absolutely gorgeous braids. I don't do four strand, five strand, six strand. You, however, can take this dough and do all of those things. This, by the way, is a two pound loaf. So I will show you what I do because I'm not so good at making the gorgeousness braids. I have a long oblong piece and I kind of go like this a bit and then try to make it sort of uniform. And then I take my handy dandy bench scraper and I cut it into three ropes that I hope are of equal size-ish. I don't get too crazy about, you know, weighing the strands to make sure they're the same. I don't roll these into balls. I don't even really roll these into ropes. You can do it. I'm not so good at it. So I'll show you what I do. Now I'm sure many of you use the cookie sheet way of baking your challah. And if I made prettier braids, or if I didn't want nice, fluffy, high hollow loaves, I would do that too. And I did do that for a long time. But I have switched to using a 10 inch oval challah pan that I get on Amazon. So if you did a six strand braid or a four strand braid, it really wouldn't show as well in this challah pan anyway. So I'm just gonna start braiding. I'm just gonna mush those top pieces together. Just a simple three strand. That was a little skinnier. Oh well, it will be beautiful anyway. And then I just kinda tuck under and transfer it in. And that's pretty much it. So now we're going to walk over to my oven and I'd like to show you how I do the final rise. 
I don't cover this because I'm going to let it rise in a slightly heated oven. What I do is I, I don't have a proof cycle on this oven, it's too old for that, but I don't need it. Turn on my oven to bake and turn it to the lowest temperature my husband goes, my husband goes, my, <laughs> my oven goes, which is 170. Set a timer for one minute. That one minute of warm up will just provide the perfect temperature for proofing the bread its very last time. Um, this is just what my mother taught me to do and she didn't make bread, but we did make yeast dough together sometimes. And this is just what she taught me. The reason I don't cover it is because there's no draft inside the oven. There's no reason to cover it. It doesn't get dried out. It just rises absolutely perfectly. So when this timer goes off, I'm gonna shut the oven off. Do not preheat your oven to 170. You're only heating it at the lowest temperature for one minute just to get it slightly warm. It's as if you walked outside and you felt like, oh, it's kind of warm outside, but it's not, ah, oh, it's hot. It's just maybe feels like about 75, 76, 77 degrees-ish outside. Okay, timer is off, cancel the timer. Turn off the oven. Do not forget to set that one minute timer. Make sure your oven rack is, in, is a little lower than center if you are using a big deep pan like this because it'll rise up too high. I'm just gonna pop that in there and I'm gonna set my timer for 45 minutes. Every single bread I make, and I break, bake challah, rye bread, hamburger buns, brioche, cinnamon rolls, dinner rolls, crescent rolls. I don't even know what else. I bake tons of different yeast spreads, and I always do this, and I always set it for 45 minutes, and it's never overproofed, and it's never underproofed. It's, it always, it just seems to be magical, the magical time for my kitchen. So when this timer goes off, 45 minutes, I'll be doing an egg wash, sesame seeds and a bake, and I'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see, the final rise, nice and fluffy and puffy and beautiful challah. I have an egg wash. This is one whole beaten egg with a splash of water. I don't measure the water. It's probably around a tablespoonful. I always use a silicone brush. I started out using a pastry brush with bristles and sometimes I would deflate my beautifully risen dough using those bristles. They were just too rough. So I use the silicone brush. It doesn't really hold any of the egg wash in. So I just kind of more pat than brush. And this has worked well for me. Another reason I prefer to use this challah pan instead of baking a braid on a cookie sheet is that we like to use it for sandwiches or toast. And if it's flat, doesn't make a very good size sandwich. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna get just a teeny bit fancy. And I'm gonna do sesame seeds alternating with poppy seeds, which is kind of a fun thing to do. Just for something different. Okay. It doesn't work out exactly alternating, but that's okay. All right, and I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees 
and I will bake it. I'll set the timer for 25 minutes, but it will not be done at 25 minutes. Most likely it will be kind of brown by then. And so at that point, what I do is take its internal temperature. If you don't have an instant read thermometer, this is a very important tool to have. It has a little probe. And I mean, I have it set on Fahrenheit because I'm in the US. So when the bread looks nice and brown on top, it may not be done on the inside. So I stick it in the middle somewhere, like maybe around there, all the way in. And it needs to be between 190 and 200 degrees. And that's when you know your bread is done on the inside. I can't tell you how many breads of all different types my husband and I went to slice after cooling for a couple hours and oh man, it's not cooked inside. So now for the very inexpensive price of an instant read thermometer, I really know when my breads are done all the way through. I'll show you after it's done baking. As you can see, it's a big, fluffy, gorgeous challah. And um, I'm gonna let it sit in the pan for about five, 10 minutes, and then I will put it on the rack and show you what that looks like. So here is the end result of the challah. That's the top view. And that's what it looks like on the side. You can see how humongous it is. Here's my, my hand. <laughs> So you can see, it's a big one. <laughs> it should be plenty. Well, I would call it a regular size challah. Again, I'm going to, well, I'm gonna reiterate that you can certainly take that dough that I got out of the bread machine, braid it however you like to braid it, bake it on a cookie sheet, on parchment, if that's what you like to do. But in my family, we don't use it just solely for Shabbat, we use it for you know, sandwiches or toast or French toast or whatever. And so, you know, you get a nice big slice when you bake it like this. And um, while well, I got you here, this is the rye bread that I also made at the same time because I have three bread machines. <laughs> I'm crazy. So anyway, um, that's challah you made uh, using a bread machine for the dough. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll give you the link of the recipe in the description.